Hey everyone, Tactics here, and in this video I wanted to have a bit of a discussion on Guardian Druids, specifically how they're affected by some of the new stuff we've seen going into 9.2, like double legendaries and the uh, return of tier sets, and what's looking to be both good and bad going into the patch. Obviously this is very, very early on, right? We haven't even had the build actually go live on the PTR and be playable, we just have the data mining stuff, so everything here is subject to change i just think it's fun to kind of discuss these things and think about how these new systems could change things up for bears so with that said if you enjoyed this video be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it and let's begin by just quickly going over the tier set bonus and, and giving my thoughts about it i did briefly discuss this in my tier set video where i went through all 36 spec tier sets and give my thoughts so if you want to see that you can check that video out i'll link it down in the description below but here i'm going to be a little bit more in depth on the guardian druid portion so starting off with the two piece bonus casting bark skin causes you to berserk for four seconds also assuming this will be uh incarn if you're talented into incarn and the four pieces well berserked you radiate 45 percent attack power cosmic damage to nearby enemies and heal yourself for 61 percent of attack power each second so during your incarn during your berserk and raids you'll be pulsing every one second dealing uncapped aoe damage it seems and then self-healing as well so in mythic plus kind of scenarios it's really doubling down or tripling down depending on your uh covenant uh, that incarn window you're going to be really really strong thanks to that four piece but i think this 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 two piece is a little bit underrated i think because this helps a lot so casting bark skin which uh, is a fairly low cooldown, right? It's like somewhere between 32 and 48 seconds if you're using the conduit and maybe using the talent, right? Uh, so when you cast Sparks, you get four seconds of Berserk right off the top of it. And that can actually, that's that's really big for Guardian Druids, right? Because if you think about Guardian Druids and one of their bigger problems that has been a pain point in, the, I guess, the recent expansions, it's always been Snap Threat and just initial durability on the pull, especially if you're not going into a pull with a lot of rage, right? So obviously if you, you can mitigate that second problem by moving into pulls with a bunch of rage or a full rage bar and just iron furring very early on, but sometimes it doesn't work out like that or sometimes there's big gaps between pulls and you lose rage or whatever it is, you, you mess up. Um, and so this can actually help to drastically mitigate that, right? Because if you pop bark skin right as you're running into a pull, you're then able to thrash spam right so um going into berserk with that berserk conduit we also get a bunch of haste and berserk right so we're probably able to fit in like at least three maybe four thrashes in this four second berserk not to mention if you uh cast thrash before you bark skin it'll then instantly reset the cooldown of thrash because you'll enter berserk where your thrash has no cd right so that'll let you get off five six thrashes very very quickly into the beginning of a pull which helps you not only because you have bark skin up for that extra dr but it'll give you that ufr shield in mythic plus and at the same time you'll be radiating that healing every second so you get four ticks of this heal and four ticks of that cosmic aoe damage that's going to help a lot with both snap threat and initial durability on pulls in fact that may just straight up fix guardian druid's problems with that if you're wearing this four piece and that's actually huge especially because like i said you can get barks into a very very low cd and i i don't know fully because you have a the earth warden versus survival of the fittest debate right and obviously in mythic plus earth warden combined with ufr really just makes you invulnerable during those uh incarn windows right but this four piece might make it so that like you can just straight up drop earth warden and then you'll still be invulnerable even without earth warden during your incarn windows and outside of that you'll be able to bark skin more often which lets you get more of these smaller berserk windows which gives you overall more ticks of this four piece right so that's an interesting thing to think about it's not guaranteed that it's going to make survival of the fittest better than earth warden in mythic plus but it certainly gives it a fighting chance to be up there right because you can get all of a sudden a way more offensive benefit from running survival of the fittest whereas earth warden is kind of just strictly durability on on the same kind of topic of of what this four piece can let you do right the snap threat uh night fey i mean a lot of the top end guardian druids you see will are, are running Karain because again first strike is just really really good for snap threat and there are some 
bosses where you can kind of abuse certain ad spawning or whatever that is to kind of get a pretty decent first strike uptime. But this, I think, alongside the fact that you're going to be getting that one minute, the, the Covenant legendaries, right? So a one minute Convoke legendary with this set bonus, I think kind of pushes Naya just significantly ahead of Karain. Because you're going to get, I think, uh, do I have what? Check out the soul binds here in a second. There it is, soul binds. What are we? We're druids, and we're going to Night Fae, right? Because you're going to get this Grove Invigoration. So you're going to get those big health and mastery stacks every minute. And, I mean, that that's really big, right? Because right now, there's a debate to be made for Naya, right? She's, she's, she's definitely solid, right? You get burrs, you get a bunch of endurance conduits going down, and she has a much better uh, capstone. Karain's capstone is pretty weak, to be honest with you. Uh, but really, what everyone runs Karain for is the, the Wild Hunt tactics and First Strike, which help with that snap threat, right, just on initially on pulls. But if that problem is kind of solved by our tier set, the one minute and the addition of one minute Convoke kind of makes Naya very, very desirable, right? You're gonna, that Grove Invigoration is going to be so good, not to mention all our other stuff. So that, that's going to be interesting to see as well. But I guess for me, my thinking is, I'm guessing is Night Phase may not be the actual go-to Covenant. Right. For me, I actually think because of these Covenant Legendaries, Kyrian, I think, is looking the best for at least top-end Guardian Druids. Because I guess a, a big thing for the Kyrian Legendary is you want to bind to a good player. right? Not only just a player that's high up on that spreadsheet. Well, I think uh, Katha has has developed a, a spreadsheet that has all the, uh, the, Kyr uh, the Kindred Affinity uh, stuff in it over in the Guardian Druid Discord. Uh, so you want to bind with someone who's not only high up on that spreadsheet, but also just a good player in general, because you need them to be alive, you need them to be, you know, doing good damage, and obviously amping the damage of a good player is going to give you a bigger benefit than amping the damage of a relatively worse player, right? So, for high-end Guardian Druids, I think Kindred Affinity is going to be very, very powerful, because the one problem is, like, for, for Kyrians anyways, is that this legendary was super, super good, but Guardian Druids already have a super good legendary for both raids and Mythic Plus, right? You've got Draft of Deep Focus, really, really good for cat weaving in raids, and then of course you've got UFR for Mythic Plus, and you couldn't, it was hard, in raids you could justify dropping uh, Draft for, for Kindred Affinity, but now you don't have to choose, right? Now you just get to play both. And I think that benefits Kyrian much more than everyone else, just because of how powerful the Kyrian Legendary is. 8% uh, stat for two people is a lot of stats, and then you double it while you're empowered. And, and considering in Mythic Plus, you're obviously going to be running Mechanicos, and you're going to be getting that big CDR on that empowerment cooldown. Uh, that That's just, it's going to be very, very good if you're playing with good players. Obviously, for personal DPS, it's not going to be the play most likely. Uh, it's, there's a good chance like Venthyr with the Sinful Hysteria or even One Minute Convoke is going to be better for personal damage. Um, but I think for overall raid and group damage, it's going to be hard to beat Kyrian. Uh, and man, I feel bad for Necrolords. I don't know, man. I think this, I just think this Necrolord Legendary needs a full, it needs to be changed, right? Because a 60% chance for it to actually split when it jumps compared to something like Kindred Affinity, where it's just passive stats all the time and then doubled stats uh, whenever you empower it. It's just, how do you even, how are these, how are both of these legendaries put in, right? There's just such a huge power difference. And even if you compare it to like Sinful Hysteria, right? It's just such a huge power difference between these two legendaries. I think, yeah, I think the RNG in this legendary just has to go. I think maybe, I don't know, like the, your first swarm is guaranteed to double up and then maybe like increasing... Uh, causing it to increase your max swarm stacks on a target so that maybe this kind of doubles down on Necrolord being the go-to in single target and then it make this legendary also makes it really really good in two target cleave right because you can you'll be able to maintain this higher stack cap on one and two enemy targets so in single target it'll be much better with that legendary if it increases the max stack cap and in cleave two target it'll be much better because it'll let you maintain it on two targets I think that's just a much better legendary design maybe than this 60%, but, you know, it, regardless of if that's the change that happens or not, I mean, I think this legendary just needs a massive buff, just help Necrolord out, and I would I would love Necrolord to be the, like, the single target spec, you know what I mean? Like, Night Fae is kind of that uh, flexible spec, uh, you've got Venthyr, which is way better in, du in doubling, tripling, quadrupling down in your incarn windows, 
depending on your gear set and, and where you're at. Um, and then Kindred Affinity is there. You're kind of more like a buffer, right? You're, you're giving other people some damage. And I'd love to see Necrolord kind of be the single target spec, but this legendary just needs needs some way to boost that. Because uh, right now, I mean, it's just it's just not good, at least for Guardian, right? I guess I don't know how this would interact with other specs. PvP, I, I know, I think Necrolord Restodruid is kind of a menace in PvP, maybe? I don't know. I've heard some things about that, but uh, at least for from a Guardian Druid perspective, this it's just this legendary alone just makes it so it's like, why would you ever play Necrolord? It's a little little upsetting, but you know, I, I actually do like Necrolord. I played Necrolord all the entire first 9.0 patch because we didn't have a Necrolord in our Mythic Plus group. I like having that fit into your rotation, the Unbridled Swarm or the uh, the Adaptive Swarm. I actually did enjoy playing with it, um, figuring it out. Right, it adds a little bit of intricacy. It's not terribly difficult to use, but it's it adds something to the rotation that I think was nice. Um, and I just really, really would like to see all four Covenants be brought to the same level. Though that being said, Guardian Druids are in a pretty nice spot. Three of the Covenants are still very, very good, right? Kin uh, Kyrian, Benthir, and Night Fae, all very, very strong. So, you know, you, you could realistically play any of the three, I think, going into this patch and be just about fine. Uh, I'm gonna get the Necrolord uh, Renown up as well. Maybe it's a little copium, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, I believe. But yeah, my thoughts. I think Kyrian is gonna be the go-to. Snap Threat I think is gonna be very very uh, much easier for Guardian Druids with this two-piece and four-piece combined. Also, that on pull durability problem is gonna be much easier. But I do think this this bonus is much more Mythic Plus based than it is rating based. Uh, obviously, with the exception of Venthyr. Uh, you're not running Incarn in raids, right? You're running Berserk and you're doing cat stuff for the most part. But I guess maybe on fights where you can't cat weave, um, that Venthyr Maul build could be could be pretty big damn with the Incarn running and this four piece. That that could be really really interesting. But again, that, that that's a pretty unique situation where you can't cat weave at all. I don't know if I don't think that happened at all this raid uh, where there was a fight where you just couldn't cat weave. Uh, and I believe the only one really uh, in Castle Mathria was Stone Legion, where you couldn't cat weave. Uh, and Denathrius. I guess Denathrius in Phase 2, you couldn't cat weave, but you could in Phase 3 and Phase 1. So, yeah. Uh, it needs to be pretty specific, but it's a chance that one of the harder bosses doesn't let you cat weave. But overall, I think. I think it's going to be Kyrian that's going to be the best covenant for higher end groups, whereas Night Fae and Venthyr are probably going to be uh, for personal damage in either raids and Mythic Plus, respectively. But that's it for this video, guys. As always, thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Your support really does help. I would love to know what you guys think, though. How do you like this tier set? What do you think of double legendaries? Let me know down in the comments below, or you can come stop by my Twitch channel at Tactics, and we can have a discussion there. Otherwise, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.